Good evening. It's Friday evening, 10.35 actually in this Friday evening. And welcome once again to Hold No Bars. And tonight, it's two days before the e the event that we all said caused us to grow up, independence, 53 years ago. So we're going to talk a little bit about independence. But before I speak about independence, let me say thanks to all those callers from SUKIBO who have been calling, especially in the last hour because last week's program was being broadcast. And to say to SUKIBO, yes, just after Ramadan, we're going to come and hold some live programs up there in Region 2 for you. Though a lot of persons do get this program uh, in SUKIBO, for them, it's coming a little bit too late, and people have been calling from Esukibu asking for us to come. Hold No Bars will come live to Esukibu, but as for the next few weeks, we're going to be recording the Friday evening programs, this one in particular, and rebroadcasting that. Um, from Esukibu, a couple of things have surfaced. One, the issue of the house to house registration still why and one call it this evening ask again about a question we raised last week why we have to have house to house registration and he was saying it's because we have to remove the dead people from the list so i will repeat the issue with respect to removing persons who have died and their names still on the list, how we could address that. The second issue we want to talk about, uh, Esquibo. Um, we have to be a bit proactive also on the program and we're going to need to speak about education, especially in the rural communities, right? So I want to raise this issue of education and how we reach persons who don't have um, access to post-secondary training outside of the city and perhaps Burby City in campus. So we're going to speak um, a little bit about the programs for education and training. But the caller from Esikibo has said that one, when the PBPC gets into office, they would like to see a team like campus in Esukibo. So, an extension of the University of Guyana, just as in Tain in Burbese, should be in Esukibo. And for me also, one should be out in uh, Region 9. So, thank you, that caller. But also the caller made another very important point. She said, look, let us be realistic that we're not going to be able to provide jobs, especially in an oil economy. Um, for this caller, just give me a few minutes and call back and I'll take that call, right? So. What, the, what that caller was saying from Esukibu, we're never going to be able to provide enough jobs in some of the other areas outside of the urban centers and along certain belts in the country. And a place like Esukibu, we're going to have to have a new culture. She said that while the um, Institute of Distant and Continuing Education has a, I want to say a campus, but they have some courses. Because the IDCE hasn't really changed its model since I was doing economics with them in 1973. So that's a long time ago. And we haven't seen any major shift in how education is 
dispense in our country. I have to say education and training because when you get beyond the uh, post secondary stage is yes continuing education but a lot of training also and um, how do we reach out to those people and this is one of the big areas which the PPPC in its manifesto for the next election will be tackling directly. Now the point was made that in Esquibo, you're not hearing about the oil economy. And it's something which President Jack Dew spoke of yesterday, yesterday, Thursday, May 23rd, at this press conference. He spoke about the oil wealth should reach every single one, not just a few persons. And um, that is something which he is strongly, the PPPC is strongly committed to. I hear him saying it wherever he goes, in and out of the coastal area. So we have, this is a big issue for the non-urban places. And we're gonna have to train people. People will have to be a little bit mobile in terms of looking and going where the opportunities are. So preparing for the oil economy that post-secondary education and training has to reach out to the non-urban centers. So let me thank that caller from Esukimo who earlier this evening asked me to raise that as one of the suggestions which they want to put forward. And if we can go back to the issue of removing the dead people from the list of electors. So the earlier, earlier tonight, the caller said, Mr. Nadirai, I heard you, but I still feel that you need the house to house registration to remove the dead people. There are about 6,000 persons who die in the country every year and who ought to be removed from the voters list or the National Register of Registrants because children also die, right? So, or people I should say under the age of 18, under the voting age also die. And every month, the GRO is supposed to send a list to GCOM, especially those 14 years and older, to send it to GCOM. And that is GCOM's authority to remove that name because it's a name it's not a person eh? no from the register of registrants and the voters list the caller said how could that be done without the house to house and this is how it could be done it's basically a desk operation and a verification what happens is that you yes i agree with the caller and all of you who are saying not every death is registered that might be so but that's a very small percentage by and large the overwhelming overwhelming amount of people who die are registered so it needs somebody a team of persons it could be including the scrutinizing from the party and the auditor general office let's say teams four or five teams or five persons each along with the authority from the general registrar's office, can go and compile the monthly list and we can go back from 2011, the last house to house registry, registration exercise. And all we have to do now is with that authority, the GRO signs off, goes over to GCOM and the same team, along with the GCOM officials, said, and that exercise could be done in less than four or five weeks. And you can clean the list of the persons who have died and their names are still on the list. You can cleanse the dead people, as we will say, from the list. Let's say we still have 12,000 persons who have died on the list. And I'm just throwing a number up, right? Let's say we have 12,000 persons who have died. The jeopardy we have, if we go to house to house, outside of the illegality of it, because it's not provided for in the law, 
outside of that is you will disenfranchise over 50 to 60,000 people who are migrants. That's the jeopardy you have. And outside of the illegality, it's the disenfranchisement of people that have been registered through the legal process, and now someone is going to take them off the list, which is not right. Okay, so that's on the registration exercise. GCOM is pumping billions of dollars into this house to house registration which is illegal and they have no intention GCOM, no intention whatsoever of building consensus around having proper elections no consensus whatsoever and look at um theresa may today prime minister of britain has resigned or well, will be resigning on june the 8th um, as soon as the party picks a replacement, probably at the end of July, August, there will be a new Prime Minister from the Tory party, that's the Conservative Party in England, right? And they will be there. So this issue of education is another one that um, we spoke of earlier and the registration for the house to house. Yes, it's 53 years since independence may 26 19 1966 53 years and you can share if you were around prior to independence and just at the wrong independence and you want to call and share your independence experience with us and what has been the significance of independence to you, please do. We'll open tonight on that because come the 26th of May, on Sunday, we are going to be raising the golden arrowhead and it's going to be done at that um, park, the Jubilee Park, Durban Park, which is mired in corruption. It's going to be done there how uh, sacrilege I think could be the word yes so it's going to be done there I don't know how um, what show of unity but I I read an, a letter which is going to the press from Mr. Mortland Williams 80 years old who have shared some of his experiences with me and he wrote a nice piece I hope it's published in the print media because I understand he has sent that off. So, Mudland Williams um, has shared his experience along uh, serving Son of the Soil and an activist since the days of independence. And he, he mentioned how the youth arms of all the political parties, then the PYO, the PNCYO, Right, the PNC, it used to be the People's National Congress Youth Organization, PNCYO, Progressive Youth Organization, and the guys, GUIS, Guyana United Youth Society, from the United Force, that they were out on the streets because there was a curfew. Just in, in the 60s, you had a curfew, and they used to have a six dusted on curfew, and it, the youth arms of these parties came together in defiance of the curfew. He also said he remembers um, Dr. Jagan and um, Janet Jagan, Mrs. Jagan, uh, breaking the curfew and travel out of the city because there were some restrictions on them traveling and they went to Port Moran and they were duly arrested and imprisoned. Um, and that was all doing the struggle for independence. And then the, the representatives of the three political parties were invited to Lancaster House in England and um, made representation to the person in charge there. I think it's um, Duncan Sands or Sandys, I can't remember. But this is a little history that he shared. I thought tonight I would also share that with you. So. 
We are now ready for your contributions on Hold No Bars this May 24th at 10.50 p.m. in the evening. So now call us. You have all the time left on this program to make your contributions to the program. In the meanwhile, as we wait for the calls to queue up and they're coming in, Hi, good evening. Okay, that, that person can't read. I, I'll go with the sign again. Right? Okay? See that? See that? If you irritate the ears of the listeners, I'll cut you off. Good? Okay, so sorry for to the second caller because the first call I, I couldn't take because I had, um, I was still doing my piece. Good. So the lines are all cleared. You can also WhatsApp on 6819312 and the other lines are open. Let me just get this on the telephone closer so that we can take the calls on all the lines. Great. Good. So we have all the lines cleared now and it's over to you. So Independence 53 years. Um, the program is being pretty well received throughout the country. I had a lot of feedback this evening from Esther Kibble and I want to say, Hi Esther Kibble, we're going to be coming live in your area just after the month of Ramadan. And um, I know some of you said you go to bed early so you don't, you're not able to tune in at this time. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Go ahead. You're on the air. Okay, the person not ready there. Right. Esther Kibble wants better post-secondary education and training and want to be involved in preparing themselves for the oil economy right and that's a commitment uh, the pbpc surely is going to be making in the manifesto for all the non-urban and areas in the country because the oil activity right now is centered within a very narrow radius within georgetown and the east bank and a bit on the east coast so that was Esther Kibble, and then we had another caller this earlier this evening, off the air, who wanted to talk a bit more about getting the deceased person's name off the register, right? So we deal with independence, we can deal with still the issue of registration and the issue of education. The other topic that really occupied a lot of the callers this week um, and as we move from community to community was when will the CCJ make their decision known? When will the decision of the Carbon Court of Justice be delivered? I thought it was going to be this week yesterday or sometime today and that time has passed so I want to feel that it will happen sometime during next week because I can't see them taking four weeks to deliver the decision so let's hold another week patience patience and little tolerance um, is one of the, the issues. And I want to raise a controversial um, meme. You know, all these things that come around. Uh, one person sent me something that's floating around the net. I was a picture of Roger Khan. And it says, convicted for drugs. Labeled a criminal. 
and you had a picture of Roger Khan. And then next one you had convicted for drugs. Named the legend. And he had Buju Banton. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Right, good, night. good evening. I think I make a complaint anyway. They got turned on the phone, your, your your television volume, you know. Go ahead. Complain. Yeah. Which station you better make the report? Pro station. And they say they can't take a report? Yeah, they don't have a response with that. You gotta be kidding. Call me. Yeah. Call me offline. Good. Right? Call me offline um, sometime tomorrow, anytime tomorrow after 10. And I'll follow up for you. That's it's nonsense. Don't no, no, they're responsible. They're responsible. Right? And, and we, we need to know the people at Grove who is saying they can't take a complaint. Yeah, yeah. Right? Good, thanks. Come on. Grove, you're in our community on the East Bank. Grove Police, from our East Bank community. A person coming to make a complaint against the police and you're saying you're not responsible? Come on. You have to. You have to be. Unless we have a new breed of police persons that I don't know. I'm sure Commander Chapman, he is going to be. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Hold no bars. Uh huh, tell me. Mabaruma. But you're not getting this program in Mabaruma? Huh? You're not getting this program in Mabaruma? No, I'm in Georgetown. You're in town? Yes, I'm in Georgetown. Uh-huh. At Mabaruma police station, you don't get no justice. The Spanish people there is there. Uh-huh. And they're thieving and doing a lot of wrong things. And when they're done, they're paying the Spanish people them for, for doing them things up for jail guy means. It's mm. like a CID fat one. And the next fine one, and the OC up there don't take no just, you don't get justice from them. Mm -hmm. I went to the complain authority, mm -hmm. the for them, for my child, and then they take it. Just tell me, they got the Indian man, they'll tell me that I'm going to look into it, I'm going to look into it now. And don't forgive me here. An Indian fat man was sitting in the chair. Okay. Then I got into um, the commander, called the commander. Mm -hmm. Up there, right. come and send me to Indian guy. They call her. What? Some. I forget his name, but I send me to Indian guy. The guy take my statement, mm -hmm. take everything down, tell me you're looking to the matter. Then they look into no matter. Okay. My child. How long ago that was? That was last, no, last week, the other week. Mm -hmm. And when they're done, my child they supposed to get bail, but three weeks now he cannot get bail. Then say how my son is in the lockup and how he can I want to know how he got to get a phone in the lockup to call to threaten the people and when he come out he don't kill them. Mm -hmm. Just to detain my child again. again. Mm -hmm. For three months now he in remand. If that is what they're doing. But we want police station, you don't get justice. I'm and that's what they're doing, they're paying. The police them to do them things and the police walking with the thief man now. I, I don't know I don't know all but I'll call I'll call you tomorrow, right? Uh -huh. To get some particulars yeah. on it, right? Okay. Thanks. Uh -huh. Okay. So um Commission of Police, Leslie James seem to have to do some house cleaning because if the people Okay, if the people feel that they're not going to get justice coming to the police, crime will go rampant, All right? We had a person just call in there on a, if the camera could have zoomed in, on a no caller ID, I don't take those calls. So, so the callers, 
you're gonna have to let your number show up right because if you do something wrong then at least we have your number and um, we're not going to take callers from private or any ID that's blocked good so please I didn't want this program to this evening to be a complaining program we wanted to be a bit more proactive we have two callers one on the landline and one on the cell line hi good evening hold no bars good evening good evening at the Grove Police Station uh -huh. they have a record truck the police at Grove Traffic Department because mm -hmm. a friend that they have a record truck with a tray plate mm -hmm. always drunk and driving a red bull up the road mm -hmm. and break down, break down police station the man in charge of traffic because he's a very close friend of him nobody can tell his driver anything on his back mm -hmm. and, and he has station, he has a tow truck, truck that's not registered Mm -hmm. When the vehicle crash on his bank, this truck got a crash with the gun and police force. Okay. And the driver for the truck, always drunk. Driver cheap, they arrest people off the road. Okay, well, I don't know about the drunkenness. We have to get them, get them tested, right? Yes. But with respect to driving without a trip, that one is easy to easier to establish, right? Yeah. Good. We look out for it. Thanks. And sorry, sorry, accidentally cut you off there. Um, yeah, one of the things we're going to have to do though is some of the um, the issues we're going to raise. Let us just don't raise issues which we can um, do a little verification on, right? So a person um, being intoxicated, you normally got to get a. Good evening. You're on the air. Good evening, man. Do you have a problem, right? Good. I complain MDC. Mm -hmm. Then I complain about police, but I don't complain about drainage and, and flooding and everything. Mm -hmm. Then before, uh, 10 years back, you tell this MDC in group, when they talk about group, mm -hmm. they're blind to it. We ask you about clean flood. Mm -hmm. They gave it the street flood. And it, when I told them, listen, you are blaming the government, but just in charge of the MDC of group. Mm -hmm. And if you talk to them, you come bend the ball, so you bend your soul, all the dirty water come mix up here. Mm -hmm. And just a bucket of water in that fall. And all the rest of the month, when you told them, oh, we're going to look at the, they don't look into nothing. Mm -hmm. What is you causing... You can tell them with them, you see, you're paying tax, you're paying tax, Okay, okay, but let's, let's, let's be... Let's like to have them driving in a pool of water. If you could come to my man and you'll see them, you play blind to it. We were telling you going to visit the you have to visit church, right? If you business, you can do what you want, they just tell you. And when you go to church, when you jump you, you start to come and say, you can't see jump you with that. When you talk to this one, when you want to jump you for? I want to treat you, I can't see jump you in the office. Okay, could you now listen to me for 30 yeah, seconds? Yeah. I want to find out if you know what's causing the blockage so that the okay so that's so something you have to check and then i want to say one other thing about the leader of the opposition office and him himself he's very open to seeing and you're, open to, I there several times. And you're saying they're saying you can't see him yes i can't call me i call him the office uh -huh. and like the region, yeah. mm -hmm. and they told me that they oh, you want to see him Text me, text me, text me on the same cell, the cell, the cell number there or WhatsApp yeah. me, right? Okay, good. good, thanks. Yeah. Okay, so tonight is going to be a night of complaints, right? Um, apparently. So Grove, my good friend out in Grove, the chairman, the vice chairman, um, at, at least we just can't dismiss people. The person seems to have some amount of passion for his community. And it's very easy to dismiss people, but let us check it out and see what the Hi. issues are. Hi, good evening. Hold no bars. You're on the air. All right, good night. Good evening. Let me turn up your volume. Good. Yeah, um, I have a complaint to make. Um, at Greenwood Junction there, mm -hmm. we're turning Mm -hmm. 
Gotcha. Thanks. Good. Okay, so we're getting quite a bit of complaints again. Um, I hope we don't turn the program into a police passion. Right? So Grove Police, we had uh, two issues in Grove. The flooding, one against the police. We have police in Maburuma, right? And also Grove, right? Okay. I'm just making a note here. Okay, so n hold no bars. Let's hear your views. The house to house registration, education. Um, what are some of your views on that? And the issue of the communities. What is happening in the communities? The, the other issue we have is we're celebrating 53 years of independence. On May 26, which is Saturday, the Golden Arrowhead will be raised for the 53rd time at the, this time, not at the National Park, but at the Jubilee Park, the infamous Jubilee Park. And I say infamous because this is a park that is supposed to have cost in excess of $700 million dollars. And some, some say $700 million in private donations were provided. Only $60 million was reported. And that's where we're going to be raising the Golden Arrowhead on Saturday night, tomorrow night at midnight, flying it. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. It's not here. Go ahead. This government cut schools, um, school voucher for children, ten thousand dollars per child, right? Mm -hmm. And today, the, yesterday, the office of the president sharing a bunch of bands and ticket for all the supporters. Mm -hmm. They went in, they went in Tiger Bay, all by stuff, all the ghetto areas, and mm -hmm. where all the supporters are sharing a bunch of bands and ticket. And the school free money, the cut for children go to school. Mm -hmm. And Supporters could go off the president of the orange ticket they want for them and the friends and family. Okay, thanks a lot. Okay. Hi, good evening. You're on the air? Okay. So, that caller was not ready there. Great. Okay, the lines are all clear again. And um, a new one. Sharing Buju Bantan tickets 
It's Bujubantan out of prison on drug charges, being hailed a legend. Raja Khan will be out of prison on drug charges and be labeled a criminal, right? So, as they say, you know, one drug pusher for one set of people is a hero and the other one is a criminal and vice versa. Tickets for Bujubantan. Did you get your ticket for Bujubantan? And this last call is saying, um, oh, by some, I didn't hear about all by song. In fact, even today I was in the community uh, about the tickets and Tiger Bay. But I know that the government has been distributing Buju Banton tickets for the Independence Concert. I, li I like his songs. And I think a lot of people um, do like his songs and Maybe there was redemption in, in prison. But just as Buju could be redeemed, other persons convicted on drug charges could also be redeemed. What makes one person redeemable and the other person not? Right. So independence, 53 years. And what about our independence? And what do I remember of independence? I remember the ministers coming to the school and um, I was in form one, I think at that time, I had a fourth form or form one, big hall explaining all the good things that independence will bring for us about we're going to be masters of our own destiny and we're going to be able to control the wealth of Guyana and we'll be able to deliver El Dorado. And independence was a time when, just after a lot of strife, a lot of conflict in the country, um, some say it was class, some say it was race, some say it was politics, but regardless, we had horrible conflict. Over 176 persons died and over a thousand persons injured. And then, a few years later, we had independence. At independence, at the National Park at that time, I know that we had um, a coming together of the forces. I saw pictures of the political leaders together, and it was a time when there was some amount of togetherness, cohesion around independence. I am happy that we had independence. I am happy that we had independence. And I am not one that says that the good old days. Mm -mm. I don't know about good old days. I think today is better than any day when I was younger. So we had independence. There was a lot of expectation. There were also many claims being made by our leaders but we couldn't get it right. We couldn't, we couldn't put it together. And so the last 53 years, you know, happened. We experimented with a coalition government from 64 to 68. We had rigged elections uh, from 68. We had experiments with different forms of socialism, cooperative socialism. We had dictatorship. In spite of all that, a lot of our people did produce. We moved on at great pains. We grew at great pains. We had a change in 1992 between 1992 and 2015 we've seen a lot of repairing of the damage that was done before some people say it was worse than the previous regime that's a viewpoint i don't think so and now we have a golden opportunity in spite of the one-sided nature of the oil contracts which um, 
we are doling out, right? Outside of that, this country will get, let's take a call. I'll come back to what I was saying. Hi, good evening, you're on the air. Go ahead. Okay. Hello. Go ahead, you're on the air. Okay, Mr. Man, good night. This is Starving O'Brien. Chef, how are you, Chef. sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope you keep up the job. You're doing a very good job. Thank you, Chef. Yeah. All the best. Okay. Good, good man. Good night. Okay, so that's the famous Gavin Govaya, uh, chef, and he's a very well-known person, came back from Venezuela about 15 years ago and has been doing human work in terms of the community and imparting his skills on people. Hi, good evening, you're on the air. Good evening, sir. Let me raise your volume, go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Okay. You might have to speak up a bit because... Young people in the country must know. Yes. This guy, Jim Jones, killed 900 people and mm -hmm. administration mm -hmm. crime commit and, and old guy, Jim Moore, mm -hmm. had to carry his charge six miles from old guy, Jim Moore, who was guiding him, which are, who was the head of the army, who administration was provide uh, me to guide him in the jungle to carry out his work. He can't come from America just as a noble and come and carry all his operation there. But mm -hmm. he was getting help from the who administration, who was, who was, and who was in power, mm -hmm. the crime committed. What the American government investigated them, even some of them still alive in this country. Who mm -hmm. was going on, who do this, this, this massacre. That was part of it. So that was the America, the young people must know Young people know a lot of things about past in the PNC. Good, thanks. Okay, so one person is saying that um, Jonestown um, happened during that time, yes, and was facilitated. And there is some merit in that because you have to get Congressman Ryan coming all the way from California receiving the complaints. I'm sure those complaints also were lodged against um, Jim Jones in Georgetown. But fell on deaf ears and um, you had to get the U.S. congressman to sacrifice his life and then Jim Jones uh, murdering 900 odd people. Yes, that's a stain on our country which is not that easy to erase. So we're talking about independence and some of the history that um, happened during that particular time. The lines are still open. We just have about 10 minutes remaining on the program for tonight. I know we had that announcement, so we might impose on the operator for a few more minutes. So let's say we have about 15 minutes remaining for tonight. And um, yeah, I one, one caller says, I always say I come back to an issue and I never come back to it. So bear with us if sometimes when the call comes and we lose the comment and we lose the thought and we never get back to it. Good. Esikiro, thanks for lightening up this Friday evening on that uh, rebroadcast call, but we're going to come live to you after Ramadan in Esikiro. A lot of complaints this evening on the police, the NDC in Grove. Grove seems to be an area that we have to pay some attention to. Um, so maybe we have to do uh, or provide more presence in Grove. Because Grove is almost like a town. It's strange. It's strange among the people who live in Grove. And Grove is the longest village I understand, or one of the longest villages in the country. And look at it among the people in Grove. And it has everything that commands it to be a town. Right? It has population, it has bank, it has hospital. It has good people, it has enterprising people, it has churches, not ch the edible type of churches, right? But I think they might be one of those two. But everything to make Grove a town exists. The population of Grove is more than 
many of the recently named towns in the village, in the country. You have Lethem, you have Malia, you have Mabruma. And Grove is about, what, seven, eight miles away from where our minister of communities live. But we didn't hear about Grove being identified as a candidate for township. But it's something that we need to look at, Grove, right? Yes, independence, we were speaking of earlier, 53 years, and I was speaking of um, some of my experiences and looking at an evaluation of the period from independence and how we went through that dark period of cooperative socialism which some people tried to bring back. Cooperative socialism. I remember the um, just after the coalition got into office they had a big rice conference and people were talking about bringing back rice flour. I can't understand I can't understand in this day and age, and after all the experience of the past, you will have some lunatic will stand up and say, let's bring back rice flour. Rice flour is a specialty item, but it's not a staple. It's not a staple. It's a specialty item that's used in confectionery. It's used in preparing edible foods because you make like a rice paper. It's high technology, not only in the science, but also in the art. So I had a good laugh at that. Um, and, you know, the biggest accomplishment for the coalition in the four years has been the few overpasses on the East Bank and two arches at the southern and the eastern entrances of the city. So these are really big achievements of the coalition government in the last four years. So we can say that since independence, we have seen arches in Linden, arches in Coriverton, arches um, in Brigdam, an arch on the East Coast Road, on and at the Grickler, and the arch that was at Rheinveld, First Street and Public Road, Rheinveld, that one was removed to make way for the, yes, there was an arch there. They used to have a nice coat of arms hanging by chain around the arm there. It was a liming spot too when I was young. Hi, good evening. Go ahead. Yes, yes, I'm not here. Go ahead. I think I've got to have three quick questions for you. Good. Um, one is the police. Traffic by the name of no, no, don't raise names here. Okay. So don't, um, don't, don't raise anything about that officer. I won't take it. Uh, secondly, um, the road in, in Scotland, yeah, that was a mm -hmm. miserable. Mm -hmm. um, very the tax alarm, nothing has been done to the road there. Mm -hmm. I'm starting with, I wish it, when they are getting to our fifth chain, but give me to them. With the name name. Because it's very like the school now, they, they, they formula with the names of the minutes for them now. Okay, and what is this? It's not easy to have minutes of them afraid, minutes of them home afraid. Mm -hmm. They got different, different names now. No, it's not the problem with. The problem is that they change the minister wrong so often. By the time you remember one, you, f you have to remember another one because they change them wrong. Okay. Uh, what's the third thing? Yes, it's it, with it, 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 the minister name. And the minister names. Yes. Okay. Or the ministry names. The ministry. The ministry. Okay, good. Thanks. Okay, so yeah, if you're gonna call and make a complaint about the police or a police, you can raise name. Good? If you mention a name, I'll cut you off, right? Or I'll stop you. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Go ahead. Well, you know what you have to do? You have to come and not only let your voice be heard, you got to put your shoulder to the wheel. Yeah. 
alis isladu amota mm-hmm. and fat pan everything mm-hmm. and peril once oh. at the peril mm-hmm. and the pagtas niya sa money good thank you and then I do not do for the people thank you yeah. okay so we got that um, we have to be short just five minutes remaining on the program this evening and uh, let's take as many calls as we can share a couple of experiences with me of independence hi good evening you're on the uh, air hi good night mr master i'll turn you down a little bit go ahead uh-huh. go ahead so oh, you brought up a topic there the rice flour mm-hmm. i just wanted to know mm-hmm. if you could remember what the ksi know somebody inside huh <laughs> sorry yes i know about the ksi knowledge sharing yeah, institute yeah, you the knowledge sharing institute yeah and the only knowledge you really gain when you went there to me mm-hmm. is how you could stand up in a line that was so compressed that if somebody died in that line, mm-hmm. I think you could have moved away and the person might be still standing. It's here. Let me, I, that, that was one I could never understand the naming. Uh-huh. Knowledge Sharing Institute yes. for a grocery shop. Yes, yes, yes. But there was a lesson in it uh-huh. because you stand in the line yeah, in the hot zone. But more more than a few people said KSI meant know somebody inside. Oh, no, so, but you know, the, so, only, the only knowledge I acquired was standing in this line so compressed that if you died, you might be left standing. Okay. And and here, you know, let me do uh, I, I got the off. They had a, a soap named the Dream Soap. Yes. That you could, when you're on bed with the soap night time, uh-huh. you could dream about all the nice things you didn't get. Because it was a nice yes, soap right. from Dominica. Yeah, dream soap. You remember the soap? I know the soap very yes. well. When you when you bathe in soap, you used to dream all the nice things that they did they, they deprive you of. Yeah. Okay, thanks for that. Thanks. And I did not call her, but KSI, you know. So KSI, among a lot of people, stood for know somebody inside. So I was... I'm happy you brought it up because Minister you said I got corruption all over. You know how to start, right? Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Go ahead. Good. Uh-huh. Which government? This one or the incoming government? The one in office which one is ever going power. Uh-huh. Okay. We like to do with the Jaffanel money to the nation of this country. Mm-hmm. And then they got the venture to come in. The kill economy, the cost of the government. They're coming in. Don't, don't knock the Venezuelans. A lot of the Venezuelans are Guyanese. Okay? No, no, no. They're, most of them are not Guyanese. I'm not too sure. They don't speak the language. Guyanese don't speak the language. When you speak to them, they don't have something to say. I'm not too sure. But I'm Guyanese sure parents. Them, watch. You go to the bar. You go on your road, you go to your restaurant, you see them. When you speak to them, they don't speak English. Uh-huh. Okay, thanks a lot. Let me take somebody else. Don't let's argue over Guyanese. Uh, I know uh, a lot. Thousands of Guyanese of um, Venezuelans are of Guyanese origin. Hi, good evening. You're on the ear. Hi, how are you? Quite well. And yourself? I wanted to hear the experience. I'm like little girl. Um, in the PNC time, right? Yes. I, my mom used to go down to my kid market and I had a, a big meal. And you'd go buy bread there, that's when we had to have, we had rice flour time, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I used to buy bread there because then we had rice flour. You used to come pay an extra price for that bread. Um, but before you reach home, somebody used to keep it from you. Oh. <laughs> yes. And all that. Another thing I want to say, the time the government has paid that kind of money for Buju Bantan, mm-hmm. and people here, whether they're Venezuelan or not, and you want to do humanitarian work, they could have taken that money and helped some people in, in, um, in need. Thank you. Thank you. Great. So we have, we're going to press the operator for a few extra minutes while we are bordering on 8.30. Hi, good evening. Hold no bars. You're Hold on the no bar. No, 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 no. I turn it around. I want to say hold no bars. You see the fist there? Oh, yeah. hold no bars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it's it's no bars hold, referring to wrestling. and But I want to change this to be hold no bars. You talk it as you see it. Hi, Mr. Brother. The promise that I'm speaking to back about the 
presidential candidate of the PPP qualification. Uh -huh. And one more other thing. Okay, he was he was out he was out in I think Maruka. I saw him on Tuesday evening at Masjid in Petersburg. I think it was right, and then he had to go off to Maruka. But um, that matter is going to be further discussed by the party and him. Okay. Uh, to run over the mm -hmm. the um the prime minister. Prime Minister candidate now. Who is the Prime Minister? Not not decided yeah. as yet. You want to know this thing because we have no old no bars. Right. No secret. Good. Gotcha. All right. Good night. Yes. So we could take two callers before we end tonight's program of Hold No Bars. Yes. Let me just, uh oh, we had a few messages on the WhatsApp. Um, that, okay, one is from that person who is a voice message. Hi, good evening, you're on the air. Hi, good evening, sir. I was here to understand that five members from the ruling party side to stand today. Chief James Trinidad. Go ahead. Uh, uh, should I take it that none was sent from the opposition side? Well, no. The opposition has to get their own people. But that doesn't seem to be logical or fair or whatever. Right. The government is made up or the legislature is made up of the government side and the opposition side. Right. Why take money to send only the ruling party side? Uh huh. Good. Glad you raised it. Thanks. Yeah. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Hi, good evening, Mr. Mantor. Good evening. I think you should have just placed the corruption a bit more. Mm -hmm. It must be every time you approve, every time you approve them. Just, no, just corruption. So we should address corruption more? Yes. This should be tough when you approve on corruption. Okay, pal. I'll do that after Ramadan, right? Good, thanks. Okay, Janu. Good. So, we've had a few minutes into the um, other program. I think it's time that we wind down tonight's program of Hold No Bars. And we are going to be back here with you on Friday next. Again, to all of you who see this program at different times in different parts of the country, it's at 11, at 10.30 to 11.30 every Friday, and that's the live program. And for those who don't get the opportunity, like in Esukibo, we're going to have to come out and meet with you and do a program up there. But tonight was a very uh, calm and sober night, and on behalf of the operator, the directors of MTV. We want to wish all Guyana, and especially the fans of Hold No Bars, a very happy 53rd an Independence Anniversary. And let us reflect, but more particularly, let us see how we can really make El Dorado a paradise. I'm not too sure about the goal. Some people said that was a story that Sir Walter Raleigh made up. Not too sure about the goal, but let us see if we can make it a paradise for the 750 people who live here and perhaps the 750 people who want to come back and live here. From all of us here, to all of you, thank you very much and good night. <laughs>